Hello fellow plastic throwers, this is Fulcrum and in today's Airsoft Guide we're going to be taking a look at the wiring you'll get inside of an AEG and we're also going to talk about MOSFETs. Now the other day I was doing a spring change on my M14 and I couldn't help but notice that my contacts are starting to, starting to burn out. Over time your trigger contacts will start to pit and burn out because you are switching a well, quite a lot of current from a pretty meaty battery to a pretty meaty motor so you're going to get a lot of sparking at the contacts. And over time the arcing of sparking will pit and wear away at the contacts. This will also cause a build up of carbon which will increase the resistance and it will just generally start to slow your gun down and you might, it might not become as responsive and eventually it will come to the point where the contacts will fail and you will no longer have a connection. To demonstrate this we have the motor out of my M14 which is a Tornado F1 high torque motor and the contacts used to connect across here so we're just going to touch them together to mimic the contacts. On the other side of the wiring harness we have a 30 amp automotive fuse. Without a fuse if something goes catastrophically wrong with your airsoft gun like your MOSFET blows up or something shorts out or the motor overloads you can end up with an awful lot of current going through the wires and also the battery being overloaded and basically you can end up with a gun on fire and at the very least you're going to melt all your wiring and you have to redo the wiring loom at worst you're going to have a lipo fire or any other battery sort of fire so you want to avoid that in my experience there's no downside to fitting a fuse it's not going to hinder your fire rate or trigger response and even if it does I think it's well worth it, it's well worth having that extra bit of protection in case something goes drastically wrong. For testing purposes we're going to be using the 7.4 volt 1100mAh 25C LiPo and we're going to plug it into the wiring loom and then we're going to plug that into the other half of the wiring loom and then if we short these two wires out, I'm going to hold on to the motor so it doesn't jump around. And this is your typical bog standard AEG wiring. Now a battery puts out direct current and direct current is notoriously hard to switch without getting an arc. And then if you're trying to switch a big inductive load like a high torque motor, you're going to get a lot of sparking. And as you'll be able to see when you're switching the motor on and off, you'll get a lot of sparking at the contact. Now it's worth pointing out during this test that the motor is under no load right now. When you're pulling back a big spring or spinning the gearbox around you're going to get a lot more current draw. And over time that sparking is going to wear down your contacts, it's going to cause pitting, it's going to cause carbon build up and eventually your contacts are going to fail. And the best way to save your contacts by eliminating sparking is with a MOSFET. Now what an airsoft MOSFET is, is it's basically an electronic switch. So rather than the contacts handling the full current of the motor, there is a tiny switching current which the contacts handle and the main motor current is switched by the MOSFET on the board of the airsoft MOSFET. Now for the M14 I wanted a very basic trigger MOSFET like what I've got in the Uber Womble. Unfortunately I couldn't find that exact one but I found this X Cortec Nano. And I'm not going to lie, it's bloody small. I know it's called Nano but that is tiny so that's going to be interesting soldering that. Now this MOSFET is very basic, there's no programmable features nor is there active braking. I don't need that for the M14. Now you can get more exotic MOSFETs on the market. The most famous of which is the Gate Titans but I don't have any of those because I don't personally have any use for them. I only have two guns which have programmable MOSFETs. One of them is the Ares Amoeba CCR which has the EFCS system in and the other gun is the JG G36C I own which has a Jeftron processor unit in. Now you do need to know how to solder to be able to wire an airsoft MOSFET so you'll need a soldering iron and some solder. Now my soldering iron is a 30 watt Antex soldering iron. Now for the majority of the soldering you'll need to do on an airsoft gun 30 watts should do you fine. And for solder, I'm using some Duratool leaded solder. In my opinion, lead free solder isn't as good as leaded solder, so make sure if you want the best stuff, you get some leaded stuff. And for this job, we shouldn't need any soldering flux because this is Rosen Core solder, it's already got the flux built in. Right, so we're going to remove the MOSFET from the packaging. It's hard to do this whilst looking through a camera. And it comes with a bit of heat shrink tubing already and a very basic instruction manual. We'll have a look at the MOSFET, that is bloody microscopic. And if I remember correctly, I'm going to have a look at the guide obviously. You have three connection pads on the back for the motor negative, the ground and the battery positive and the motor positive. Now this airsoft MOSFET works by switching the ground rather than the positive like the contacts do. And as you can see right there, that's the actual MOSFET chip and the trigger line connects to that little solder pad there. So I might need to get my smaller soldering iron for that. Right, so we've moved the MOSFET. Oh god, we've moved the MOSFET out of the way, this motor's got really strong magnets on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect the positive of the wiring loom straight to the positive of the motor. And we're going to leave this tail on here for one side of the contacts. 
So we've cut the positive line down to size and then we're going to strip it and that motor has been really annoying because of the magnets inside it. Ah, oh, goodness sake, why does nothing ever go right? There we are. Ah, I'm going to get burnt at this rate. Now we have the wire stripped, we need to tin it and I'm going to put it in this little clamp here just to make things a bit easier and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you how you tin a wire. Now when you are soldering what you want to do is you want to heat up the wire in question or the connection in question and then you want to feed solder onto it. You don't want to do what a lot of people do which is to ball up solder on the iron's tip and then try and rub it on. It's not going to stick properly and the reason being is all that smoke is the flux burning away. You want the flux to be on the wire or whatever joint you're soldering. And if you're going to try and rub hot solder onto a joint which is untinned and you try and join two wires together like that, the joint's going to fail very very quickly. What you want to do is you want to heat up whatever it is you want to apply solder to and then you want to feed the solder onto the tip of the iron. And because the flux is now coating the wire it allows the solder to bond onto the wire. And because the positive tab on the motor already has solder on it, we do not need to tin that. And like I said, we want to keep this wire connected on for the contacts. So if we hold the wire to the connection and then heat it up, the solder should combine. Try and get it as neat as possible. Be a bit of a big joint, but there we go. Nice big joint, but it's got to handle a lot of current, so that's no problem. But that's now bonded on all right. And as you can see, that's a nice solid joint. Those wires aren't coming off anytime soon, but the soldering iron is going to fall over. And I'm probably going to burn myself before the end of this video at this rate. Now, of course, if we connect the battery right now, the motor's going to spin. That's because the negative line is still connected, so we're going to disconnect that. And the most important thing you must remember when soldering is you want to apply cold solder onto hot wires, not hot solder onto cold wires. Ah, no, 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 no. And as you can see from the wiring diagram provided, the positive line of the battery goes through the MOSFET and straight round to the motor connection and then a small wire connects that to the contacts and the other side of the contacts goes to the trigger pad on the MOSFET and G connects to the negative of the battery pack and M neg is motor negative and that goes to the negative side of the motor. Right, change of plan, we're going to fit the MOSFET in the negative wire here so I've resoldered that connection there. I'm going to strip a small amount of insulation off this wire if my strippers want to play ball and we're going to tin these wires. We're going to put one connection onto the MOSFET at a time, so that way there's less chances of us pausing this up. So this wire is the negative coming from the battery, so we want to find the G pad, which is this pad here. And we're going to double check the wiring diagram, and G goes straight to the negative terminal of the battery. The pad on the left is the pad we're going to solder the ground wire to, so we're going to do that. I've got it in the helping hands, which will help whip away some heat from the MOSFET chip, and it also keeps it nice and steady. So once again, you want to heat up whatever it is you want to apply the solder to. Right, so we've tinned the ground pad and we're just going to neaten up the ground wire that's also been tinned. And once again, you can hold the two connections together and try to make sure it's in focus, but also make sure you don't burn yourself when you're looking at a camera. Heat them up like so and the connection should bond and there we go. And that seems to be a good join, nice and shiny, nice and solid. And then we've got to strip and tin the negative line going to the motor. It's a lot easier when you don't have a great big magnetic motor trying to pull everything in the northern hemisphere onto it. And once again, heat up the wire, hot wire, and then some cold solder. It's hard trying to do this whilst looking for a camera, I'll tell you. I've also cut the positive line because we need to take a tap off of that for the MOSFET. And before I forget, I'm going to put the heat shrink for the MOSFET over the wires on the motor end. And I'm going to trim the heat shrink down just a bit. So that way we've got plenty of it to cover the MOSFET, but not too much that it becomes unwieldy. And then we can slide that over the wires and push it right out the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is bloody typical, isn't it? Right, we're going to desolder the wire from the motor just to give ourselves a bit more movement to play with. And now we want to tin that pad on the bottom because that's the negative motor connection. There we go. And once again, hopefully without burning myself. Oh, nearly did then. 
Why is my soldiering iron wire so short? And there we go. And whilst we're at it, we're going to tin the top pad for the positive line. Make sure there's no bridge between the two, otherwise it'll be quite a loud bang when we connect it. Now we're going to strip both positive ends, the positive end that goes to the motor and the positive end that comes from the battery. Right, so we've tinned both wires. Right, the next bit's going to be fiddly. We've got to connect both these lines together and onto the same pad. So I'm going to try this. Right, I'm going to try soldering that one on first. And then... This is going to be probably when I burn myself. I haven't burnt myself just yet. Oh, Jesus. Get ready for some swearing. If we heat that up like that. Hopefully. There we go. Is that a good connection? It looks it. Yep, there we are. So that way, the MOSFET now can get its positive feed from the positive line of, well, the battery and the motor. You want to make sure that you do things quickly when you're soldering, so that way you don't overheat the components. And whilst I remember, we're going to solder the negative wire of the motor back on. Now for the other side of the trigger contacts, I've got this very thin wire here. It doesn't need to be that thick at all because it's going to be handling, what, a few milliamps at best. And once again, we're going to strip the wire and we're going to tin it. Should be a bit easier to solder because it needs less heat because it's a smaller wire. And tinned. Now we need to find the trigger pad on the MOSFET. Right, the trigger contact is that very small square, the third one along on the right. I'm starting to think though I'm going to have to use a smaller soldering iron for that because I risk sucking up those little SMD resistors. I'm going to go grab the smaller soldering iron for that. I don't know where that bloody small soldering iron's gone, so we're going to clean the excess solder off the tip of the iron. And we're going to try and do this very bloody carefully. Oh, that's not carefully at all. King motor. So, it's that one there. I really use just the tip of the iron for that. There we are. Now, this is where a smaller 15 watt like pencil iron would come in handy. This is a bit of a gargantuan iron for that sort of thing. And we're going to trim down, once I find where the side cutters are gone, we're going to trim down a bit of that wire so we can solder on the smallest, we, we can keep it nice and short. I think, there we are. That's now soldered onto the board. We're going to loop the wire back round so that way is a bit of strain relief. Alright, so we're going to strip the other end of this wire here and tin that. That's going to be our contacts for now. I could probably get away with using the old contacts because whilst they are pitted they still have a connection and with this there should be you know a few milliamps maybe even microamps passing through um, the contacts so there shouldn't be any sparking at all. Oh. Right so we're going to connect the wiring harness on and then just double check the polarity yeah motor neg ground depth yeah that's fine. Right three two one no oh, bangs. That's good. Now if we connect these two together. That's it. And... Jesus. No sparks. Right, we're going to disconnect the battery before something gets knocked and shorted out. And we're going to slide the heat shrink over the MOSFET. Right, that heat shrink was getting on my nerves, so we're just going to chuck some electric tape on it. Ah! Right, we're going to not bother with the cable ties because I don't know where they are. Just going to wrap the power line and the trigger line together. Just so that there's hopefully no strain on the trigger wire especially. And um, then we'll wrap a bit more tape around it. That should be working now. And then we'll double check it. Again, make sure your polarity is correct. Otherwise you'll blow these things up quicker than your fuse can pop. The fuse is only really there to save to save the battery and the wiring, really. It's not going to save the MOSFET if something goes wrong with the MOSFET. But it will at least save you from cooking your gun up. There we are. She lives. 
But that's how you fit a basic trigger MOSFET and hopefully this video will be able to help you out with the basics of Airsoft AEG wiring looms. I know that we're using a basic MOSFET, we're not using anything fancy that you might need to program or that you might need to install inside the gearbox, but that should hopefully give you a basic idea of how you can wire up an Airsoft gun and yeah, hopefully if you need to fit a MOSFET, this guide should help you. If you find this video useful, then make sure you leave a like. And if you do have any more questions, then please make sure you leave them down in the comments. And if you don't want to miss out on any new airsoft content, then make sure you subscribe and click on the bell icon to enable notifications. And as always, guys, play fair, play safe, take care.